stop putting database credentials in plain text. In this video, I will show you exactly how to secure your Spring Boot app secrets with AWS Secrets Manager, step by step. We will take a real application that exposes credential in its application.properties file. We will fix it in the right way to make sure that our secrets will never live in our source code again. Stick around till the end of this video, because I will share with you some pro tips for local authentication with AWS, a practical demo and a bonus tip you can't miss out. Let's get started. So in the last video, we saw how to connect our Spring Boot application to a Postgre database using a Spring Data JPA starter, right? By defining the entities, repositories, and then passing the correct application.properties properties, right? Uh, in order to connect to the database, right? But now the focus of this video is to show you how to make it on the right way in terms of security on the authentication with the database. In other words, how to start securely your database credentials. So here we have a really simple uh, Spring Boot application. Let me show you. This is the regular uh, entry point, right? We have as dependency, we have the also the Spring Data JPA. We have the web just to expose a really simple controller. We have here the key of this video, which is Spring Cloud AWS Starter Secrets Manager. We have obviously the driver to connect with Postgres. Uh, we have this test started that came with the Spring Initializer. And also we have this dependency manager here, uh, which is part of the AWS Cloud, sorry, Spring Cloud AWS dependencies, which is part of AWS Spring.io. If you don't know it, it works to check AWS Spring. As you see, there is only one S here. This is a community project to make the integration between Spring Boot and AWS seamlessly. Okay, because we have obviously the default uh, GDK, sorry, the, the default SDK from AWS to use with our Java application, but it's pretty manual to deal with it. So this project is community based. Okay, this is an important cloud. It's not uh, maintained by Spring or AWS. It's supported, maintained by community. Uh, this makes the integration uh, seamless there. You know, then using the default um, SDK provided by AWS. Back to our application here, let's take a look on the application properties file. We will have basically the same application that properties file we had for the last video uh, that basically is, shows the URL, username, password, and driver for the connection with database. And actually, these other properties are not relevant for, for us right now. Uh, so basically, here we are passing username, password, and even the URL as plain text on our application file, application properties file. And this is really bad because we should never expose our credentials, any credentials on any source file. Okay, one call out here. Uh, we are going to remove obviously the the plain text secret from our source code. But in case you have already committed your code and push it to the remote, the Git server, uh, with a real credential like a prod credential or even a QA credential, um, besides of removing it from the source code, you need to rotate that secret, right? You need to invalidate that secret and generate a new one. Uh, if you work on an enterprise company, you probably can't do it on your own. So you need to write a ticket for the, the IT department to, to do that. Okay. Cause it doesn't matter if you remove from here, cause it will be on the history of, uh, Git, right? So whenever you see the Git log, you see that modification where you remove the secret. So it will stay, uh, it will be exposed anyways. Okay. So now that being said, Let's take a look on AWS Secrets Manager. AWS Secrets Manager is a service that you can use under your AWS account to store securely secrets, okay? And then retrieve that whenever you need. So here is basically the homepage for the AWS Secrets Manager. And what we're going to do is to store a new secret. 
Here we have a few types, but for us, we are going to select other type of secret. This is just like you can store whatever you want, any string you want, any whatever you want, okay? Uh, so here we can do something like username and then get the username here. We can get password and then the password and let's also start URL. Some companies don't like to start the URL as secret. I do, but this is an open point, okay? This is uh, it's totally fine to just do not uh, start it here. I like to because it's something less, right, for an uh, attacker. So the attacker wouldn't know where is the, the host of the database. Whatever, okay? Um, that's pretty cool. Let's just move to next. And then here, as you can see, there's a kind of convention to store your secrets. But again, it's a convention you're not required to do so. But if you do, it will be great. So in our case, we are on our local environment. And I call out here, we normally don't store our local credentials on Secrets Manager. Uh, this is just an example, okay? You would do that for dev environment, for QA environment, and obviously for production environment, okay? So it would be something like this, that. But in our case, this is just an example. And here, uh, we are going to use our local environment to store our database credential, database credentials, right? Uh, I will go to next, no rotation, and store. Okay, the credential seems to be stored. Let's take a look. Here we have it. Secret value. Retrieve secret value. Here we have all the three keys we set, right? So username, my user, password, my password, URL, the URL for the database. Super cool. Uh, first, let's take a look on our application the way it is to see if it working. Um, by the way, here I have a Postgres container running, okay, that will accept, accept these credentials. Um, okay, so let me just run the application. Okay, it looks like it started. Um, just to, to check out the credentials it is taking, I created a credentials controller here to show us which values it, it is using from the properties, right? The same properties we using we are using here. A really important call out here. This is an example. This is just to show you guys that the credentials are being get from the application.properties file under that property. We would never do something like this in the real world right so please be careful do not replicate that on your real project or even on logs okay it's pretty common for developers to forget about logs and push and deploy prod applications with logs which expose like oh i am running using these credentials no so it is valid for testing but please do not forget to remove that before committing Okay, so let's take a look. Um, yeah, basically we have this, this, and this here, which is pretty good. And now we are going to use from AWS Secrets Manager. How to do that? First, we need to add the dependency here. So we have this dependency management here from AWS, AWS Spring. So again, you can go back here, choose whatever service you want to, and there is a really great documentation. Um, this is dependency for the secrets manager, but go back here using a Amazon Web Services, and then you will find out this dependency management here. The project version, you should take a look on Maven Central, right? So you can take a look here whatever is the version you want to use and then simply start using, okay? Um, that's great. And actually, this is pretty much our version here. 
And also, obviously, I have that dependency for Secrets Manager here. So that's the first point. So the second point to make uh, that AWS Spring to fetch the secrets from Secrets Manager, we need to set another property here, which is Spring Config Import. This is used basically to import configs from another modules like this one. And then we are passing a parameter, an argument here, which is pretty much much our oh, secret name. Okay. So by this, the AWS Spring will automatically inject these secrets here as application properties. So by this, you can do this. And to show you that it is really working, I will just make this. So as you can see, we only have the we only have username uh, from here. We don't have any other property set in username, right? But by doing that, AWS Spring will create an application property called username, and then it will be available here. So the same way we can inject it here. Okay, let's take a look. It's looking great. Okay, so basically what happened is that during the startup of the application, AWS Spring dependency batched the secrets from AWS Secrets Manager and injected on our application and make it available, made it available on our application as application dot as application properties. So this way again we can do things like this and then make things like this. Just to make sure that I am not cheating, I would like to say username next. Let's see if it works. It didn't work right as expected. So that's it. We are fetching the correct attribute keys, sorry, from AWS Secrets Manager based on our secret name, right? By here. If you are liking the video so far, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon. By hitting the like button, you will, you will help to make this video reach more people who can be useful. So one point that you might be asking yourself like, oh, but what about the AWS authentication, right? Because how did, uh, how was possible like to use this and how AWS didn't know to use my account to look for this secret here. So basically, we have a few ways to authenticate with AWS, but for local development, the most common one and the recommended one is to use AWS CLI. AWS CLI is a project from AWS. So by installing the AWS CLI and configuring it, you can make your local environment already authenticated with AWS. And then the AWS Spring wouldn't, as you see, I, I had, don't have any configuration here explicitly like for authentication, right? I don't have any config class here. So AWS Spring will automatically detect the authentication that we already provided under the environment, uh, environment wide, right? So it will get it and use it as default. Again, this is one of the way, but the recommended way. And as we are talking about authentication, I have a free ebook, totally free ebook about OAuth 2, how to use OAuth 2, all the authorization flows, explaining in details, step by step. So don't miss out, grab your free copy right now. The link is down below on the description. That being said, as you might also be asking yourself, is something like, oh, if this is an application property and this is also an application property, what if I rename my keys to match these names? Let's see. So we can take this. So pay attention here because it will it will seems to be it will looks like magic 
but it's just concept okay so now we set our keys as application dot data source dot username data source password data source url again once again aws spring will inject these keys this map here actually as application properties under the run, during the runtime so if this application dot property is if this property is already filled by this by the aws spring we don't need that at all let's take a look oh sure the application did the run because we are expecting the username placeholder here so let me just make this and now we should it should work the application started with no data service related but this right but neither url username and password let's take a look on it and voila <laughs> pretty cool right so again uh, this kind of library is pretty handy so Tell me so I'll try it on your next on your next project and tell me in the comments what you thought about it. Okay, so that's all for today's video. I really hope that you enjoy it as much as I did. Once again, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and click on the bell icon to stay tuned for the upcoming videos. You know, you already know that it's a brand new video every week about Spring Boot. So. Why not? Right? See you in the next one. Bye-bye.